Hello everyone! Today I am here to share with you all of the books I read in April. April was a great reading month for me. I'm not surprised. I've said repeatedly since, you know, we are in this lockdown and things like that, I've been reading a ton because I'm home all the time, can't really socialize, so, and I haven't watched like anything new <laughs> or anything at all for that matter, so I have just been reading my heart out. So in total I read 14 books this month, which is just astounding. So I'm going to share with you all of the books that I read, as always starting with my least favorite, working up to my favorite. Not including in those rankings are my NetGalley arcs. I've talked about NetGalley a lot on my channel recently. NetGalley is a site where you can get advanced copies of books um, and you read and review them online and you read them as ebooks and things like that. I have like 15 I have to read so your girl's behind and I've read five this month which is great but my plan right now is to, I've read five and I'm hopefully on track to read a lot more. Um, probably next week sometime I'm going to do a big video where I review all the NetGalley books that I've read so far and really go into detail about them. So I'm not going to go into detail on here. I'm just going to tell you what now, what NetGalley books I've read and what I rated them, but just rest assured that next week will be a big, long, probably like hopefully 10 to like 12 books um, of NetGalley books I've read. It's long spiel over. So before I get into the stack right here, I'm going to share with you the NetGalley arcs I read. So first up, I read The Trouble with Hating You by Sandra Patil, I believe. I gave that a 3 out of 5. I read The Spare Bedroom by Elizabeth Neep, I believe, also a 3 out of 5. Um, Head Over Heels, I forget, Hannah Ornstern, I believe, 3 out of 5. The Right Swipe by Sophie, I forget the last name, that was a 3 out of 5. That was so close to being a 4 out of 5. I'll talk about that more in my net girly video. And the last one I read was um, Ghosting a Love Story. And this was written by three authors, I believe. This one, again, was so, so close to being a 4 out of 5. But again, as I said repeatedly already, expect a video next week where I really hash out all the net galley books. That way it's just easier. They're all compact into one video and stuff like that. So let's get on to the physical books I read this month. Be nine of them. So here we go. So the first stuff I want to talk about is The Best Laid Plans by Cameron Lund. This is a YA contemporary book that I gave a three out of five. The more I think about it, the more I might move it to a two. I know that's harsh. I don't like giving twos out because who does? But this one just, I had a lot of problems with it. I have a whole match review with this as well as three other, as well as two other YA contemporaries I'm going to talk about today. In this book we follow a character named Keely and she's a high school senior and she is the last of her friends to have her virginity still intact and apparently that is a curse upon her like nobody's business. Like it is not good to have your virginity. If you're a virgin it's not a good thing. At least that's how it's portrayed in this book which is the number one thing I was kind of like ugh, about it. But anyway Keely meets this college guy and he's experienced and they start you know getting together and he wants to take things to the next level but she's an experience and doesn't want to tell him that so she decides to ask her best friend of like forever Andrew who knows his way with the ladies if they could you know if she if he could teach him if he could teach her some things or two about you know things and there you go from there. It's a friends of the lover story. I did really like the writing. This is a debut um, author and I like the writing. I could definitely, I flew through it because I was invested in it, but I think the biggest qualm I have with it was just how they talked about sex. Like it was very much frowned upon if you're a virgin. There was a lot of slut shaming in this. There was just a lot of really things I don't think should be taught to teenagers. I go into it more in my master review of really how I feel about it, but I just didn't love the message that it sent, that being a virgin is bad and I'm like that's I don't think that's a great message to send at all but there you go so that's definitely my least favorite book of the month sad to say because I was really looking forward to it we have what I like about you by Marissa Cantor this one is another white contemporary that I liked I didn't love I said in my review of all three of these that I could definitely tell my age with reading um why contemporaries I'm 31 going to turn 32 this year and the farther away I get from my teenage years, which it's very far already, whenever I read a Y contemporary book at that, I really feel disconnected from the characters. I just, you know, I don't have a strong connection with them. They're going through things that I went through many, many moons ago, and so I can't relate to them. So, you know, take my reviews always with a grain of salt, no matter what book I'm talking about, um, but especially when I'm not the targeted age group. I think these books could be great for the targeted age group, like teenagers and stuff. I'm 31, but I still like the genre. I will still continue to read it, but just some books I really feel like I have a hard time connecting with. This one too. Um, 
And this is about a girl named Hallie. Hopefully I can go with me with the synopsis because it's kind of hard to explain. So Hallie has this online blog, a book blog, and it's called OTP, like One True Pairing, I believe, where she pairs like cupcakes with books and I think that's great. But she goes by the name Kels online. That's like her pseudonym. Like she doesn't, nobody knows the real Hallie. She never puts pictures of herself, things like that. She has an online best friend named Nash who's got his own like web comic and things like that. She has feelings for him, but they've only known each other like, you know, in the digital world. And then Hallie moves in with her grandfather and she meets Nash in real life. And instead of telling him like, hey, I'm Kels, you know, you know, not ha I'm Kels and Hallie, the same person. She introduces herself as Hallie and she kind of just doppelgangs. She lies pretty much. She could, she could tell him that she is Kels online, but she doesn't and things get really twisted from there. And that's the main qualm I have with this. I really was like, why is this a big deal? But then again, I'm not 16 anymore. When I was 16, I bet this would have been a huge deal to me. So, but the writing was cute. Again, I believe this is a debut novel and I liked it. I love especially to talk about the book community because she was, she had a lot of really good friends of the book community and how warm and welcome it was, but also had to deal with a lot of, you know, you know, things like that with kind of controversy and things like that. So I did enjoy this book. I think I would have loved it a lot more if it was just, if she was a little bit more truthful. But again, as always, I shall say, I am not the target audience for it. And then the last three out of five that I have is another YA contemporary, and that is Time of Our Lives by Emily Wiberly and Austin C. Mabroka. I read this on NetGalley, <laughs> coincidentally. I do want to talk about it though, because it kind of fits in with those. Um, I like this one. I didn't love it. I've read two of their other books before and their first one they released, I forget what it was called. I didn't love it, but I really loved If I'm Being Honest, which was released last year. So I was excited for this one. This one, I could see a lot of people really loving it because it does talk about a lot of serious things. We have two characters named Fitz and Juniper. We follow them both. And they are both in their senior year of um, high school and they're both, you know, going to college next year. And the whole book takes place in like 10 days while they're going on this big college tour. Juniper really wants to get out of her house. She's kind of sick of being with her siblings all the time, with her big family. She wants to move far away and start fresh and things like that. While Fitz is completely on the different spectrum. He wants to be close to his mom because his mom has early onsets Alzheimer's, so he wants to live close to home to help care for her. So by coincidence, these two meet and they learn more about each other, about their lives, and by the end they kind of switch their way of thinking when it comes to college, which I did really like. I did like that. Um, there were a couple things in this book I didn't love. I don't want to spoil it. I, I don't know. All I'll say is that Juniper had a boyfriend at the beginning of this book and then stuff happens and then the romance in this book I felt was just kind of unrealistic. Like it just, I didn't think it flowed very well. I didn't like that. I also didn't love the ending. Um, I don't think it's spoiling to say the ending really doesn't tell you what they decide definitively about college, either of them. I would have liked to know. Um, we spent all this time, you know, with them having these very strong, clear-cut decisions about college, and by the end, they've changed their minds kind of almost completely, and I want to know what they do. So I would have liked that. This was an arc, so I don't know if the finished copy has their definitive decisions. If you've read the finished copy, please let me know <laughs> if they do, but that was just a kind of some flaws I have with it. I just didn't love it, but I will say I think it's great for, um, teenagers that are going to college to read that are having a hard time deciding. I do really feel like it's a good representation of that. On four stars, I have a whole bunch of those. The first one being The Worst Best Man by Mia Soso. I randomly read this on a whim. This is an adult rom-com and this is about a character named Carolina. Carolina, I don't know. She's a wedding planner and she gets stood up at her own wedding which is just horrendous. Um, she learns that the best man who is the groom's brother comes to tell her that, you know, hey the groom's not coming. Apparently we were drunk last night and I said something that convinced him to not get married to you. So it's like, you know, it's horrible. Then we pick up many years later, Carolina, Cara, I'm sorry, Lena. I'll just call her Lena because that's what she goes by almost. She's about to land this really big account at this hotel to be like the exclusive wedding planner, but she has to be paired with this marketing team to help market her pitch and things like that. And who she be paired with is the her ex's brother, the one that kind of split them up. So obviously it's kind of a hate to love romance. I really enjoyed it. I love any books with weddings in them. You guys know this. I'm a wedding photographer, even though it's been so long since I've done one. Oh, I miss it. 
um, but I did enjoy it. It's sweet. It's a little bit steamy. It was cute. Would highly recommend it if you're looking for a quick rom-com to read. Next up is He Started It by Samantha Downing. This is an adult mystery thriller. Um, I did read this this month because it was supposed to come out this month in April, but sadly with the pandemic and things like that, it got pushed back to July. So sorry to review it super, super early. I try not to do that too much, but ugh. either way, Samantha Downing also wrote My Lovely Wife, which I read last year, and it's it's probably my favorite Mr. Ruth Thriller. I loved it so much. So this is her kind of sophomore novel, and this is about a family, Beth, Portia, and Eddie, who haven't been together in years. They're siblings, and then they're, they learn that their grandfather has died, and their grandfather left them like a lot of money, but in order to get that money, they have to recreate the road trip that they went on many years ago with him, and things happen on that road trip that like nobody talks about, like a lot of evil and not the best things. So the whole book, you're trying to figure out who, what is, who's who, like, can you trust anybody? We follow the middle um, sibling Beth the most, um, and you just, it's all about a lying family and things like that. The ending had me floored, was not expecting it. I did not love this one as much as my lovely wife, but I still think it's a good, like, sophomore novel. I will read anything Samantha Downing writes because she writes very vividly, and I will say the beginning was a little bit slow, but the ending, like, shell-shocked. Did not expect any of that coming. I would recommend it. Next up is Girl Gone Viral by Alicia Rye. This is the sequel companion novel to The Right Swipe, which I read last year. It's an adult rom-com. I don't, rom-com, whatever you want to call it. Um, I did not like that one that much. I gave it a three out of five, but this one I gave a four out of five. I really enjoyed this one. So this follows Katrina, who was in The Right Swipe. It was um, our main character's Rihanna's best friend. And so Katrina has been through a lot in her life. You don't know exactly what, but she has a lot of money. She's been through a lot. She also suffers from a lot of PTSD. And she has this head of security team named Jazz. And like, he's like almost like her bodyguard, if you will. He helps protect her. And then goes to the coffee shop one day. This random guy sits next to her. They start talking. They start flirting. He asks her out. She was like no thanks and you think that's the end of it no apparently somebody like totally tweeted the whole conversation took pictures hashtag it like cafe bay and things like that and all of a sudden Katrina's in the media and she's been trying to avoid it because she has to keep things private because of things that have happened to her in the past so she's obviously very shooken up Jazz decides to take her back home up to Northern California to like his family's peach farm I know, it's great. Um, and their romance ensues. It was adorable. It's a great friends to lovers romance. I love both of the main characters so much. They were both just very selfless and very giving and honorable people. Now, I do love a snarky main character, but I also really resonate with a selfless character that's just good overall. And that's not to say a snarky character can't be good at all, but I don't know why. I just loved these two so much. They were just giving and just great to read about. So I really enjoyed it. So this is a rare case for me, especially with contemporary series, that I like the second one more than the first. And I know I'll get questions about this. Can you read this without reading The Right Swipe? Yes, you can. With Especially with adult contemporary novels, you can read them without reading the previous novels. They'll just have adjoining characters and things like that. So if you don't like care about learning more about different characters, go ahead and read the second one. <laughs> Next up, also 4 out of 5, The Southern's Book Club Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This is an adult horror novel. That's right, I read a horror novel this year. Yay! And I really enjoyed it. I was very hesitant to read it, but if the word vampire is in the title, I'm already there. Hook, line, and sinker. I'm sold. Um, so this one takes place in the 90s in Charleston, South Carolina, and we follow this woman named Patricia who lives in this neighborhood that's like a really good neighborhood. Nothing ever happened. She's in a book club. The most she gets exciting out of life is like reading murder mysteries with her book club. And then this guy moves into her neighborhood that nobody really knows, but everybody just accepts him immediately. But Patricia starts noticing that Maybe this guy, like, we shouldn't trust him. Maybe he's a little bit evil. Maybe he's a vampire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that is what this book all is all about. This is a book where the vampire's the bad guy. You know, there's a lot of vampire books that I love that the vampire's dark and brooding, mysterious, but they're really good. They have a heart of gold, even though they don't really have a heart. But this one, the vampire is very evil, very gets into your life, makes people think differently things about you. It is graphic, this book is. Um, I will say it doesn't have child 
abuse, I would say. It's hard to explain. Just you know with vampires, it gets graphic and things like that. So I didn't love that. But overall, I really love the message that this was, yes, about vampires, but it's more about not believing women and taking, like, especially in the 90s, a lot of people a lot of men never took women for serious. They just thought they were good for like raising kids and doing dinner and fixing up the house. They never took them for being serious and strong women. And that's what this book is all about, the underlying tone, which I loved. Um, so yeah, I have a master review with this included. I go into more detail. I really enjoy it, would highly recommend it. As far as scariness factor, if I can read it, I think you could read it because I get scared of everything. <laughs> the last two are my favorite books of the month. I will say one is a four star, one is a five star. The four star is the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Hamezen. Um, this is the sequel slash companion novel to The Friend Zone, which I read last year again, and I didn't love. Again, our main character in that book was very snarky. I, oh, I just, I really did not love our main character in that book. This one, however, I loved. This one follows a character named Sloane, who is, um, the best friend of, I forget her her name in the first novel and this does kind of spoil the first novel a little bit but it's on the back of the book jacket so I'll tell you anyway. So Sloane lost her fiance two years ago and she's still very broken up about it. She doesn't you know she can't move on with life and then one day a dog literally jumps in her sunroof in her car and it changes her world. She reaches out to the owner but the owner won't contact her back and then she thinks the dog is hers and it's really help. the dog's really helping her with coping with life and getting out of the house and doing things. And all of a sudden two weeks go by and Tucker, who's the dog's owner, calls back and he's like, hey, I want my dog back. And she's like, hey, where have you been? And he is a musician apparently in Australia and he's coming back. So they start texting and flirting. It was just so adorable. The texting, the first half of the book, easily five out of five for me. I loved it. The romantic tension, the flirting, the just, it was very, very beautiful. And then the second half, I felt like it kind of slowed down a little bit. I didn't love it as much, but the love story in this was really adorable. It's all about love after loss and dealing with grief and moving on and really feeling like you can't move on. And our main character Sloane's very giving, very heartwarming. And Tucker, the dog, oh, it's just, it was just adorable. If you're a dog lover, I would highly recommend this book. The romance was great. I really love this one much more than the friend zone. So that just goes to show you, in case you start a companion like adult contemporary series and you're not really loving the first one, try the second one out because sometimes it works out in your favor like it did for me. <laughs> My favorite book of the month should come as no surprise and that is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. This is an adult mystery thriller that I gave a five out of five to and I don't do that a lot with mystery thrillers because apparently I'm super picky. <laughs> <laughs> this one I love. This is a short and sweet mystery thriller all about this wedding that takes place in this Scottish like remote island and all you know is that somebody from the wedding party, wedding, just somebody from the wedding gets murdered. You don't know who who died or who did it. It's kind of like a classic Ag Agatha Christie novel. I've heard she writes very similar to her. Um, and the reason I gave this a 5 out of 5 is the first half, it kind of lied. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh, we're following like 10 different people. I don't know. But then the ending came and the ending was just phenomenal. I've heard it a ton. I will always say the ending was just didn't expect any of it. The author wrapped it up so beautifully. I just loved it so much. So for the ending, the sheer ending and how the author weaved everything together, 5 out of 5. I loved it. Would highly recommend it. It's a short, sweet mystery thriller that I think everybody could love. That's just my opinion, so I loved it. Yeah, those were the 14 books that I read this month. Again, I didn't go into detail about my neck alley books. Expect a video next week about it, and it's going to be a long one, probably much like this one. But either way, I would love to hear if you read any of these books and what your thoughts on them are. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.